It's time for a cup of red, so let's fill your cup with rad pop culture vibes. And now your over-caffeinated hosts, Mike and Katie. Welcome, kids, to another exciting episode of Cup of Rad. This week is a special one. As we can't get to uh, Disneyland, we have a friend that has been able to go there and enjoy the new Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Justin, thank you for being on the phones with me. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on these phones. and Hopefully we'll get a little bit of uh, geek, geeky excitement going on for uh, Galaxy's Edge. I'm excited. It's, it's actually there. <laughs> oh, it's, I, the more I learned about it, the more I saw online, uh, some of the stuff even you posted, it was like, okay, okay, I'm glad we're going. Yeah. And then there's that excitement, just, <clears throat> excuse me, that excitement just kept building and building. Like, ooh, look at this. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> and therefore it was absolutely just the excitement level was above and beyond. That's awesome. So you were lucky enough to go pretty early after it opened, uh, and you are a huge Star Wars fan. Oh, yes. Or should we say mega epic? Yes, Mondo mega fan. (laughs) So how was it with the idea that you were going to get to walk into your your fandom's like reality? How was that feeling as Uh, you got close to going? The closer we got, you know, it almost got to almost like, to describe maybe your first date with your wife or your girlfriend, whoever it is out there, you get that little butterfly feeling and you're just kind of looking around going, this is really happening right now. And you're looking around at the ambient sounds as you walk through and the foliage and little things here and there. You're like, oh, this is really neat. This is really neat. And then all of a sudden to my right is a full size that I could fit into a wing fighter. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then that's when the meter just busted out of the top, you know, the old thermometer busting out of the top and stuff, excitement everywhere. <laughs> and not 20 feet ahead of that was a gray and blue X-Wing fighter. Nice. Just sitting there all set up and refueling. I'm, I'm, and I was just, that was it. I was done. So I can stay here forever now. I'm done. <laughs> that That's fantastic. So, so being able to experience that is just kind of transcending, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because all we all we had before has been star tours, and it's been right. a, and that even that even that was fun. You've you've been through the star tours, yeah. and you see R two and three PO doing their spiel, and it's just oh, this is so great, this is wonderful. And you go on a ride, and you're like, okay, let's buy some souvenirs and, and move on. This was like, oh my goodness. So, can you explain to the people that maybe don't know too much about it, but what is Galaxy's Edge? Uh, Galaxy's Edge is. Uh, well, obviously, we all know it's a it's a new land in Disneyland, their biggest expansion they've had in, in quite some time. Uh, they based the area upon a new planet called Batu, and the outpost of the the marketplace that you get to walk walk into is they call it Black Spire Outpost, which is actually mentioned in the Han Solo movie very very briefly. <laughs> so it's it's part of now Star Wars canon. And it's just a marketplace that the First Order is looking for people from the Resistance. So the First Order is everywhere. They have flags. Stormtroopers are walking around. And they really immerse you. It, it's not just walking into a land like Fantasyland, Tomorrowland. Ooh, look, it's, it's fantasy. There's a castle and a princess. Yeah. You are now a part of whatever storyline is going on inside Black Spire Outpost. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Uh, yes. <laughs> a fully interactive park, on a, to be completely honest. Yeah. I mean, from the staff to attendants to little things in the walls themselves that if you download a certain app to your phone, you walk up, you can decode, and you can help the resistance, or you can help the First Order, whichever side you want to be on. Oh, so you can choose if you're if you're resistance or first order, if you have yes. the app. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, yes. and um, as we were walking through, my fiance made me a shirt. Of course, I love the troopers, so we made a first order t shirt for myself. <laughs> as we're walking in, one of the denizens of the village of where we're walking into, after seeing this A wing and the X wing, 
obviously we're on the resistance side. He came up to me that you need to leave right now. We don't want your kind here. Oh, really? I said, oh my gosh, that is absolutely the coolest thing ever. (laughs) That is, that's amazing. Amazing that they allowed them to have that, you know, to act that, right? Yes. Yes. And, um, even small questions I would ask, there was a queue line. You can tell it's back in some bushes. And so I asked the sale, is that, what, what's this line going to be for in the future? And because I was wearing my first order t-shirt, they said, oh, nothing. That's nothing. Never mind. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> so they're not going to give me any information because I was wearing my first order t-shirt. That is brilliant. So what you need to do is you need to have a couple shirts and go back, right? And and see and if your experience is different. Grab a resistance shirt and say, all right, I want to know what's in there. There's noises <laughs> coming out of that area. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> that's 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 awesome. Yeah, I am correct because I read that there's like no music in the actual land. It's only saved for certain areas, correct? Yeah, correct. As you walk into the, we were let in through the resistance area first, and there was a little small amount of maybe ambient music, but nothing overpowering. Not like in the regular or the rest of Disneyland Park. Yeah, you'll hear animal sounds, and you'll hear slight. A bit of, you know, uh, John Williams type of overture music going on, but nothing too much, nothing too powerful. Okay. So it kind of keeps you... you really take in sights. It's great. Nice. What did you experience first? Like, what, did you go to the ride first, or...? We walked in through the resistance area, and I probably took about two dozen pictures before we hit our first 20 steps. <laughs> uh, talked, met Ray. She was walking around, and... My fiance was wearing a Princess Leia t-shirt. And so I said, oh, she loves your general. She goes, oh, well, my, my general is vital to the resistance. And she right away went over and took a picture. Oh, that's awesome. That wonderful. Uh, and we looked around. There's a couple of little gift stores right there and looking at, you know, some of the souvenirs and the outfits you can buy or t-shirts here and there. Oh, this is really cool stuff. And we keep on walking to the big marketplace it's almost reminiscent of a couple of the newer marketplaces they show in either Rogue One or Han Solo. There's flags everywhere. There's people everywhere. There's little booths of them selling their wares, whether it's creatures or drinks or whatever it is they're going to pretend to sell you. Yeah. And so we walk around the marketplace, and we notice in a tube of water to the side, there's a, there's a monster that's from A New Hope in the junk, in the junk room. And the garbage compactor lifts its head up, turns around its big old eye, goes back down in the water. And I said, oh, okay. <laughs> they, they went all out. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, that's so cool. The marketplace was, yeah, the marketplace is, is very cool. And that's where they have the person who a little, who runs Black Spire Outpost. His name is, I guess, Doc Ondar. I'm a nerd for names. I know them all. <laughs> if I pretend to not know it, call me out on it because I'm probably, I probably do know. <laughs> well, there's so many in the Star Wars universe, and some of them t- oh, sometimes yes. they can get pretty far oh, out there. So my use, my useless information is all Star Wars places and people. It's <laughs> so definitely, oh. when I do my Star Wars episodes coming this fall, I'll have to have you hit up on one of them. Get oh, your opinion on on be, each of the eras. Oh, I'd be more than happy. <laughs> Sweet, uh, but yeah, it's the Den of Antiquities is where he hangs out. He, he's a hammerhead character from A New Hope, one of the first aliens you see in the canteen as that hammerhead. And he, run, he runs the place, and there's souvenirs galore from a bust of Luke Skywalker and Jedi sustenance, which is actually just little cylinders of candy. And you can buy lightsaber crystals, and you can buy, you name it, I'm sure you can buy it. We didn't even get to look through the whole store because I'm so enamored with the first four dozen things I saw. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And that was even before I hit the action figures. So <laughs> that should tell you something. Well, that was your goal, right? You were looking for those, uh, the black series. Yes. Uh, and luckily enough, I didn't, if, if I wasn't lucky enough to get into galaxy's edge, they had them all over the park. So I really wasn't worried okay. about getting them. So that, that's the, that's a cool part is a lot not everything. I want to say maybe 25% of the merchandise can be bought over at Disneyland or downtown Disney. That was very nice of them to do for people who couldn't get in. Right? Yeah. Okay. But there are certain things. There is a full-on X-Wing onesie 
you can buy complete with the white vest and tubes and everything. Oh, wow. Yes. And I look at him. Oh, that's neat. And immediately my fiance says, no, <laughs> <laughs> unless they have the helmet and lo and behold, right across the way, an X-wing fighter helmet. <laughs> nice. Nice. Absolutely. And three different kinds. It wasn't just a generic X-wing with a little, it was Poe's helmet. It was a couple of the other pilots helmets. And it, I was, I was like, wow, they went all out for these, for these gifts for people. That's fantastic. Like, that's good to hear that they actually really put a lot of care into even just the merchandise that they're selling. Cause they can sometimes, uh, it, theme parks can be so meh in sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it, it meh. Yes. That's pretty much the best way to describe it. And it's more generic. It's like, okay, here's an R2D2 cup and here's a C3PO sipper and here's a Darth Vader fan, and they, everybody gets that. Yeah. No, you actually get to pick a helmet, and you can, you know, there's a bunch from there. So obviously, you try them on. <laughs> why would you? Why would you not? Is there um, pictures and, of this? Right. Uh, with me with the helmet, no, unfortunately, because oh. I was, I was, my camera was out. I put it on, and it was a bit too small. Oh, okay. So yeah, they were kind of meant for kids, but no big deal. That was my thing when uh, I saw the Ewok. Uh, beanie a few years back i remember trying to put that thing on i couldn't even get it on and i've got a small head oh yes right so i was like you know that was disappointing because i would have loved to have yes. run around with that thing yes me too I, I have i do not have a large head for being a large man my head is very tiny. <laughs> there's a factoid for each and every one of you out there <laughs> <laughs> right so you, you said you could buy uh, lightsaber crystals you can buy the crystals themselves off to the side and if you ask where the lightsabers are, they will not tell you. Oh. Because they do not want to get the First Order involved in where the Jedi do their thing. They're hiding the Jedi from the First Order in the entire park. So, so it, where you go to build your lightsaber, it is a secret entrance. Oh, wow. <laughs> you do, at least for the time being, you have to prepay to buy your lightsaber. Yeah. Which is a cool two hundred dollars. Okay, you can get those ones online as well. Yeah, but I think it's the experience that you're paying for. You pay your two hundred dollars. You go to the mysterious door and you utter the mystery phrase, whatever they give you, huh. and you enter with another ten people. You build your lightsaber, well, crystal, crystal and all, and there's a whole ceremony, almost akin to the wand ceremony at Universal Studios for Harry Potter. Yeah. It's very involved. It's very – people say it's it's almost like a religious Jedi experience. You build your own lightsaber and you become a Jedi. Wow. And I'm like, I need $200 right now <laughs> just to experience. <laughs> did you? Not so much for the lightsaber. I did not. Oh. <clears throat> but I did witness many people coming out and, and they – and of course they can't not talk about it. Right. They said it's the most amazing thing, the lighting and the detail and the person that's leading you is – basically a Jedi. You know, oh, they, okay. they really study their, their stuff. That's fantastic. I know I've seen uh, some reviews for the lightsabers on YouTube because I was curious because, I, you know, it was, it was surprising to see that there was like a $200 item that was also a bit of an experience. So I was like, okay, I got to look this up. And what I've seen for the sabers, almost everyone has unanimously said that it's one of the best sabers that they've ever owned. Right. Which I thought is and a great uh glowing recommendation absolutely by the look of them it's it's almost like a muted plastic not as shiny as the ones you can get like the black series out you know the 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 replicas that you can buy out there yeah online <clears throat> they're just a muted plastic of course they're you know you design it yourself so they're you know they're all going to be different but just the quality the size the look it's really a lightsaber. And if you choose, you can take the, the the saber part off and just have the hilt on wherever you would like it. Yeah, and I think that's what's so that's really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, I think, almost one of those worthwhile things just to be able to pop that out. And I also heard that you can change yes. out your crystal as well. You could buy other crystals. Yeah. You could buy extra crystal or you get extra crystals. Or, like I said, you can go buy them and. and Doc on Dar's Den of Antiquities. <laughs> That's pretty wild. It's wild that they're they they creating that immersion where where they're not even like telling you where things are. 
No. I don't know if my anxiety of, of having to talk to people would handle that well. <laughs> I already right. had a hard and enough so, time at uh, Wizarding yeah. World where we had to figure out what doors actually were real doors because the one day we went there, all the doors were closed. None of them were open. Oh, wow. And it was the oh, like, wow. okay, which ones can we open and which ones can't we? And we realized that <laughs> all the ones that were a round knob were not able to be opened. All the ones oh, that wow. had like the uh, the the long knob were because they were that was the um more for like handicap and all that kind of thing so that was your that was my tell when i finally found that out i was like okay this is how we're gonna be able to do this <laughs> that's great that's actually yeah, i never noticed that before so uh, all right. with that so you got the whole immersion of, of being told that you couldn't find out about a lightsaber and say <laughs> you're being you know the bad guy and all uh where did you right. head from there uh we past what is called the creature shop uh, where you can buy your, your stuffies and your little plastic animals. There's the frog dog creature from Jabba's palace that you see there. There's uh, a baby Rathtar you can buy for yourself. There's uh, tauntauns and porgs. Of course there, those things are everywhere, <laughs> but in a cage in this shop is a sleeping loaf cat from the animated show uh, Rebels. Oh my goodness! How that's... the Loth cats follow follow them around. Well, there is one in a cage sleeping, and its its tail moves and it breathes, and it's it was amazing looking. It looked absolutely real, and I'll, I'll post that video. It's really like five seconds, but you can look at it. It's like wow, that's really a sleeping creature in there. Oh my, that that's brilliant. <sighs> And that place was fun. They didn't have the creature that we were looking for, but it's okay. We moved on. What were you looking for? We were looking for, my son is obsessed with the movie The Last Jedi. He's three years old. Yeah. And the horse things that they ride. Okay. He thinks the whole movie of The Last Jedi is about Finn and Rose finding and saving the horsies. Okay. That's cool. cool. There you go. Whatever. Right? (laughs) And so we wanted to find one for him. They didn't have one. But I'm sure they'll have one in the future. They'll they'll probably rotate some of the creatures because there's so many creatures yeah. in, in Star Wars. You're going to have shelves and shelves of, of stuffed creatures soon. Yes. <laughs> porgs and tauntauns everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we got, we have a porg in our house, so. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, then from there, we decided, we looked at each other and we decided, all right, there's two tor- stormtroopers that walked by. They gave me a little heads up because of my T-shirt. <laughs> but they were talking, oh, we don't know what, what what's the big deal with this spaceship over there. And there it was. That moment when you turn the corner and there, just like in the very first original Star Wars movie, when Luke runs into the hangar bay, there is that beautiful piece of junk, the Millennium Falcon. So you got to see it in all its glory. Oh, all of its glory. And it's absolutely huge it is made to scale for people oh wow it was the largest one that they've built including for the movies they just built those just to kind of all right it's for the camera you just need this part big and that part will be small or vice versa this was the whole thing front back it was it was i had that moment you know the angels sing (laughs) (laughs) Ah, and oh wow it's the millennium it's the the real millennium falcon there's blaster marks everywhere there's it it looks like a piece of junk oh wow now did you cry unmistakable oh i i I wanted to cry (laughs) (laughs) well yeah well that's that's an experience to be able to see that like that that's got to be pretty emotional for a, a huge fan to be able to see a full-sized oh, falcon, right? And I, you know, and I was, I was already settled by, oh, all this stuff is really cool, and the detail they put into this creatures, and you know, all the people and their interactions with me, and there's an X-wing over there. Okay, I, I could have been done. And yeah, been like this is, this is excellent. And then <laughs> Millennium Falcon shows up, and it's even better. How close can you get to it? You can get pretty close. Um, there was a little bit of a railing where they were taking their pictures. Uh, the Disney people. Okay. People line up. You take your picture with it behind you, but you can get pretty close. You can't touch, but you you get, you get very, very, very close. Nice. Yes. That, Where you see literally the blaster marks torn into the hull, and it's just oh, that is great. 
Well, that's that's really cool because like that that would just be quite the experience to be able to see all that that detail. I think I'd just get caught up and try to take like close photos of of things just oh, yes. because it's like oh yes, you know, it's this thing we grew up with, you know, right in front of Absolutely. our faces it's from from day one. And I mean, that's the thing that we all you know, that's Han Solo's ship, that's the ship that did everything right from there. After you experience there, like, the glory, we just you know, we see that, and it's like, all right, let's go, let's go ride, let's do this, let's see what this is all about. So we weren't sure how the ride was going to be. Yeah, We've heard you can do this, you can do that. All right, well, we'll, we'll actually go ride it and find out. The line itself was just full of stuff. There's crates everywhere that if you download a, uh, a QR scanner to your phone, you can scan it, and it tells you the inventory of each crate. Oh really? And there's and and I'm not. I hope I don't think I'm exaggerating. There's hundreds of crates that you can go and see what's you know scan it and see what's inside of it. Sometimes it's just food and supplies going somewhere. Sometimes it's stormtrooper armor that they have stolen, and sometimes it's weapons that's going here or there, wherever it is that they're going to send you. Oh, there's wow. caches of, of rifles on the wall. There's proton torpedoes lined up. And it was, I'm like, wow, ooh, look at that. Ooh, wow. I probably did not see it all. <laughs> <laughs> Just an Easter egg in, in a store. Yes. Oh, Easter egg heaven. There's somebody was playing Sabak on a table. I, I took a picture of that there. <laughs> it was, it was a very nice distraction from the wait time which the wait time was only 20 minutes well, that's so that good. was awesome because the, the reservation yeah. i'm assuming is what helps that right yeah they wanted to keep the lines under two hours i never saw the line go above 65 minutes the entire time we were there so that's that's, oh, that's really cool that's really good yes yeah. go through the line there's so much stuff and then you walk in and you figure out who your boss is right away you hear that unmistakable voice of jim coming <laughs> We all know Jim Cummings from you know Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and countless other cartoons. Darkwing Duck, Don Carnage. Yes, yeah, Darkwing Duck, and I think he did a, a version of Optimus Prime at one point. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that. I one. think so. I don't know. Huh? But you hear his voice and the unmistakable, almost Ricardo Montalban accent that is Hondo Onaka from pretty much every as he's in every aspect of Star Wars. He was in the Clone Wars. He was in Rebels for a time being, and apparently now he's in the new Resistance uh, cartoon on, on Disney. Oh, really? He showed up in that one? Yes, and so he's now becoming extremely famous or infamous, depending on, on your looks. <laughs> and he's he's standing there, and then he the animatronics on him were amazing. And he turns and he tells you exactly what's going to happen. You're flying for him. He was lent the ship by Chewbacca to make runs to the First Order while he reach the profits and he just delivers the stuff so they can continue their fight. Okay. He has his own little droid and Chewbacca pops up on the screen and everybody, everybody cheers. They're like, Oh, there he is. Yay. And he's growling and yelling and interacting with Hondo and says, okay, okay, we'll, we'll make sure we get all this. Let's, let's get you guys loaded up so you can go before he changes his mind about us taking the ship. <laughs> Well, that's pretty and cool. You actually, yeah, you're handed a couple of cards, color coded. There's six people in a flight crew. Okay, you're handed those cards. We were yellow. I don't think there's any difference. Two pilots, a pilot and a co-pilot, two gunners and two ship engineers. We're like, okay, it has the direction to what you need to do on the back of each card. The pilot said, "This is how you steer. This is how you go to hyperspace." The gunners just said, this is your laser guns, and this is your torpedoes. Oh, that's fun. I'm going to hit the torpedoes as many times. <laughs> and the engineers, basically, on the back of their car, it just said, whatever lights up, hit the button. As soon as it lights up or systems will fail. Oh, so they're making this ride extremely immersive. You vary by the sounds of that. <laughs> yeah. After they hand us their cards, a door opens, and you are in that unmistakable hallway of the Millennium Falcon. Oh, nice. That, that off-white padding with exposed wiring everywhere because of all the repairs and upgrades that however many people have done to the ship. Yeah. 
And it, you are the only thing I could think is, wow, I'm in the Millennium Falcon. So the camera was right here hmm. <laughs> in this scene. And the camera was here in this scene and this and that. The chessboard, yeah. the hologram chessboard was, was there with all the seating. And of course, I took a picture there. <laughs> Do you get any time to take any photos, really, in that in that you, section? You get, a, you get about we got a good five minutes. Okay. Um, I, I think once there's more people there, once it opens without reservations, you'll you'll have more time. Yeah. To just kind of look around, there's Easter eggs everywhere, little things here and there. Nice. The Med Bay and where Han Solo lays down, and the whole board where where he and Obi Wan sit when they talk about the Force. And it being luck. <laughs> nice. And also you go to a hallway and it's the hallway where Han Solo first kisses uh, Princess Leia. Oh, cool. And, and, you know, all the mechanics are there that they were playing with. And it's like, you can recreate that scene if you wanted to. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> now, because there was not a whole lot of people, it wasn't, it wasn't a good pause, but enough for me to kind of try to snap a picture. Yeah. The doors slide open and there is the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. Everything I'm, is, if you took a picture from the movie and this, they are equal. Oh, wow. How was that walking into that? <laughs> that was amazing. Even my fiance, who's because of me, she knew of star Wars before because of her brother, but now because of me, she knows way too much. <laughs> she says, <laughs> I have ruined things for her because she'll look up, Star Wars things and be like, I, I don't know why I know this. Ah. So it's because of me. Ah, that's a good thing. <laughs> and she was actually the one, the, the main pilot of the Millennium Falcon. Oh, really? Yes. She got dealt the card as the pilot. So do you get My to choose? Niece, you get to choose at all? Or are they just, it's just like the one, they, two, they one, two? They just handed you cards. I mean, we could have swapped. swapped back and all forth, right. I'm sure. But she got that, and she wasn't going to give it up. She goes, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> and my little niece, my little 11-year-old niece, she got to be the co-pilot. Ah, that's cool. No, I'm there. Yeah, oh, she was like, wow, I get to fly this thing? <laughs> <laughs> and the pilot gets to control the ship left and right. The co-pilot gets to control the ship up and down and go into light speed. That's all they had to do. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I think a co-pilot gets an extra. On the right, and the, my brother, my future brother-in-law, he was a gunner on the left, and two people that weren't in our party, they were just kind of swept in with us. They got to be the engineers. Oh, okay. And everything lights up, and you hear Hondo's voice. that, all right, we got to go this way. I'm in this ship next to you, and you're going to follow me. We're going to go. We're going to go get some supplies. You're on a you're on a run to steal some coaxium. <laughs> okay. From some hyperspace fuel. And you go, and immediately, whatever lights up, you just start hitting buttons. <laughs> and as soon as I hit the button, the laser beam went out. I'm like, oh, boy, I'm going to shoot things. <laughs> <laughs> the girls are yelling, and they're going up and down and flying, and it's very responsive. It's really, really cool. Does the whole thing vibrate? And The like whole thing vibrates, and it's almost like a 3D screen without it. No 3D glasses needed. It's just a screen that goes around all the glass that's in the cockpit. Okay. So there's nice vibrations and a little bit of movement. Not as much as Star Tours, but enough to where it really looks like you're flying. Okay. It really feels like you're flying. It's really, really well done. Nice. Yes. And it's... And afterwards, however many things that you hit, however many things hit you, all the stats were kept. Oh, really? I shot down 12... TIE Fighters. Nice. <laughs> My brother-in-law shot down nine, but because of the, uh, we went into hyperspace once we came out into an asteroid field, as you always probably should <laughs> in the Millennium Falcon. Inevitably, we probably tried to go through them as much as shoot them. <laughs> we ended up with 10% of the ship left. Oh, no. <laughs> That was hilarious. He said, oh, what systems are working? Oh, well, life support's not working, so you really don't care about the rest, do you? <laughs> oh, my gosh, he really said that. To us. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was just so – it was fun. Yeah. I was lucky enough to where you have one button to push, so I was able to watch a lot of the screen and where we go and what we're chasing or what we're shooting at. Yeah. 
the poor engineers behind us, I don't think got to see much of that because there were just things lighting up left and right. Every time we would hit something, something would light up and they would have to hit a button. So, yeah. so they just probably were really mad at the pilots, like seriously. Oh yeah, they're like, stop, just stop hitting things. <laughs> were you able to use those torpedoes? Oh, there was one place where that button lit up and we, we hit the torpedo and we actually shot down a Star Destroyer. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, we were under the Star Destroyer when we shot at it. <laughs> so the girls had to try to fly and maneuver underneath this collapsing Star Destroyer. And as soon as we get clear, you hit light speed and we hit light speed. But when we get back to where we're going and it's just, oh, your heart finally starts beating normally. It's like, okay, we got through our mission. <laughs> and then they tell you that you only, you only came back with 10% of the ship and you better leave before the Wookiee finds you. It's like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that definitely does sound like fun. Oh, it was, it was a blast. Uh, it really was. Did you get to ride it more than once? We, we only rode it the once because it got really hot. Oh, okay. On our first visit. And there was a lot more stuff that we didn't see yet that we wanted to go see. There was a first order. It looked like a shuttle. It's a cross between... Kylo Ren shuttle and a TIE fighter. Hmm. It was just sitting in, in the town square. And all of a sudden, stormtroopers popped up on the embattlements all over the square, all up on the top railings. It's like, oh, something's going on. And then an Imperial officer with his escort comes up, and they're looking for more rebels. And there, there's a whole little show where they look for more rebels hidden among the people. Oh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't get to see it. Uh, we were about 20 minutes away in our... Our time was almost up, but that was okay. Yeah. That was fine. But apparently Kylo Ren comes out of his ship, says, did you find any rebels? And the commander says, we haven't found any yet, sir. And he gets choked and he gets <laughs> dis- disciplined for not doing his job correctly. And it, everything that I've seen about it and heard about it, it was, it was a, it's a fun show. It's very interactive. The people who work there just as, as the people who, who live there, they're kind of dispersed throughout the crowd and they're yelling things at them. Nice. Even my fiance and my niece says he walked by, they, they yelled out long live the rebels. And he just turned his head ever so briefly while walking is this, you miscreants uh. just kept on going. <laughs> well, it's pretty awesome that they were able to create then that entire immersive environment then to really make you feel like you were somewhere else, not just a theme park. Yeah. That's, we were talking about it on our way out and said that's when, when Toontown first opened. We're like, oh, wow, I'm in Toontown. But there was nothing else that made you feel like you were in Toontown other than looking at stuff. Yeah. You know, you'll see Goofy. Oh, yay. But you don't you don't get that silliness that was Toontown from yeah. Roger Rabbit. You don't yeah. get that. When you walk into Star Wars, you're like, I am not in Disneyland right now. I am on this planet. I'm at this outpost. These people don't like these people. And they're wondering who I am. <laughs> that's that's it it just really felt like i don't want to sound cliche but it, it almost felt like my little daydreams as a kid came true it's like i'm in star wars like it's all real the rebels as han solo said it's all real <laughs> yeah the force the dark side everything it's all real it's all here that's that's amazing to hear like that's that's a great thing to know how well they they crafted that you know, to get yeah, that and their attention to detail, they they must have had people who worked on the movies, in the comics, on the TV shows. They had to have at least one or two people from each to say, "All right, what do we need here? What creature do we need here? What piece of machinery do we need over here?" And they it was down to a T to where you were in the Star Wars universe. That's that's awesome. Did you uh, get to try any of the food? Uh, the food. We didn't try any of the food. It didn't look appetizing to me. It looked like they were going a little bit fancy with, with some of this. The popcorn looked very good. It was almost like a sweet and spicy popcorn. Oh, okay. I've heard it is pretty expensive it comes, for the food, actually. Yeah. The food was it was a little on the expensive side. Uh, I did buy one of each of the thermal detonator sodas, the Coke, Diet Coke, and Sprite. Oh, okay. So I, I drank the Coke. <laughs> I drank the Sprite. The Diet Coke still has liquid in it. <sighs> But I'm going to put that up on a shelf somewhere. And Those look amazing, though. Do they look as they, they, cool in person as they did it online? They do, and they're, they're very cool. The empty one up fell off of the stroller for my son, and 
one of the people that worked there, oh, oh my gosh, be careful with those. You can, you can just blow us all up. <laughs> like, oh, oh, wow. <laughs> you really paid attention and you really stayed in, in character. Uh, that's, it has to be a hard thing to, to do. So, oh, you drop your bottle, you drop your coat, you yeah. drop your Sprite. It's like, no, no, that's, that's a thermal detonator that you just dropped. <laughs> I hope that's a detail that stays. Cause I, I know that was one thing that really made me sad over the years with tower of terror when they had that still it lost like when you when it first opened the detail with the the cast members was fantastic they were always in character oh, yes. but as, as as the years went on that kind of dropped and hopefully they can keep that quality that immersion feeling with this yes and to me that's what really made it that much more special yeah i think that interaction that you get with the people when i bought my soda she asked you know she told me it was 12 credits not 12 dollars mm. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's definitely a different kind of training then. Like you, you're almost like they've they're hiring actors versus, you know, right. So, because to be able to remember all those little details and and to yeah. to use them properly, so you, you know exactly, and to never slip up to say, oh, here, you know, ten dollars and twenty five cents is your change instead of ten credits with twenty five percent. You know, it's yeah. It was wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Are you planning on another trip anytime soon? We were thinking possibly uh, in in the fall. My fiance's birthday is mid November, or mine is early December. Okay, so possibly a little bit before uh, the new movie. Yeah, which would which would be really fun because I think after the last movie, that place will be bombarded with even more people. Oh yeah, it's, it's going to be bombarded enough here at the end of this month yeah once all the reservations stop i keep hearing that they're considering that to become a normal for for some areas as well seeing as how well this has gone off for them because it also helps spike their uh their hotel because oh yeah if you if you would have gotten a hotel room you automatically get a reservation if you wished yeah and knowing the disneyland hotels and all of them it's like well that's a lot of people yeah but there was it wasn't overcrowded. Well, that's good. Which was which was awesome. The longest line was to get into the cantina to get the alcoholic beverages. Mm. It was an hour and a half wait to get inside. I, like, I just want to look inside. Yeah. So do you still have to get in line? We we can't you know have you hopping. So oh, okay, I get that. Yeah. You know, but the the if you remember when Star Tours first came out, the droid that piloted you, Rex. Yeah. He was demoted since he couldn't fly correctly apparently he is now the dj inside of this cantina <laughs> oh nice it's this, yes and it's the same voice it's the same everything the same look just a little bit of a repaint and he's doing his thing and just playing star wars music with you know some dance beats or something <laughs> like that it was it was really fun that's so cool yeah now i'm just excited now i gotta figure out how to get down there because you know that's just exactly. an experience you know, just oh, alone. Yeah, it's the experience in itself, especially for for a, a Star Wars geek, whether you like the old ones, the new ones, whatever it is that you liked about Star Wars, there's something in each and every from each and every era. Yeah, including the cartoons, there's something everywhere. So you look, you turn your head and say, "Oh, there's a there's an Imperial probe droid in pieces on the wall." <laughs> <sighs> oh, look, there's an R two unit over there that's 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 holding the wires or or whatever it is. <laughs> This, their attention, I can't say enough, their attention to detail is just absolutely amazing with this place. Well, anytime you mention Rebels to me, because that's what brought me back to Star Wars, was the, the Rebel cartoon, to know that there's the Lothcat, and I know you posted that photo of the, the Jedi uh, mask that oh, was yeah, from that. that mask was amazing. Um, that, that just has me excited to, to be able to see any of those details. That's just a, such a cool cartoon, and, and oh, yeah. the, that world is amazing. I know right off the bat, I can tell that it's going to be a while so we can save up because there's no way that the three of us are not going to want to walk out with a lightsaber. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, I even told my fiance, I said, you know what? I think next time we come, I'm going to save up. I'm going to go. I'm going to get one. Just, it just You can claim birthday, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, <laughs> birthday present. $200, give me a thing that lights up. Yeah. And I will play with it forever. <laughs> <laughs> That that I would expect full on like uh, video after in in in, oh. in the whole area of you run around with a lightsaber. Absolutely, I'll chase uh, I'll chase stormtroopers or have them chase me either way. <laughs> I'll be happy. That's fantastic. 
as a whole, you, you totally, you, you've said that you, you definitely recommend it. Is it something people should rush out to go see if they can? I'm extremely biased, but I'm going to say yes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that's the thing. You're a fan, and that's I think that's one of the best recommendations because you are a fan of all eras of Star Wars. It's not just you, right. you know, singled out an era. You 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 enjoy everything, and to be able to have that still and be like you weren't disappointed from the time that you spent there, I think is probably one of the best recommendations for a for a zone, right? Yeah, it's it, there's no nitpicking about it. There's um. I'm sure if I really looked, there would be something I'm like, oh, I would have done this different. Yeah. There, there was none of that in this initial in the initial run. And there's still an attraction to come. Yeah, do you know when that's still have one that's called The Rise of the Resistance coming. Yeah, did they say anything about when that's opening? Uh, because of my First Order t-shirt, they yeah. told me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which was still very cool. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll look online when I get home. Yeah. Uh, nobody seemed to... And then, even online, nobody seems to know yet. They're still working out some kinks, apparently. Okay. Um, I do know that inside is my my favorite Star Wars uh, piece of machinery. There are AT-ATs inside, apparently. Oh. Like full-size AT-ATs that you're going to encounter in this thing. Huh. And I, when that opens, I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I hear is either end of summer, early fall, possibly. Okay. Is that for that one to be open? I think they want people to go in and experience what they need to experience, rather than just go in, ride the rides, and leave. Yeah, I'm assuming they'll probably wait till fall because it'll probably tie into a little bit more with the movie. Right, and I've heard that complaint of people: why are they tying into the new movies? It's like, well, because they're new movies. Yeah, Disney is taking what they have right now, and they're gonna they're gonna make you spend some money on it. And I'm here to tell you that it works. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Love, love what it's the idea of like it it brought the the saga to another generation and i think that's the best thing for the brand you know yeah absolutely cuz cuz you know i i believe that anything needs to be able to find a new generation and what spoke to us as kids doesn't necessarily speak to them and you can't force that on them because then they rebel right. from it right it's it's just like you know, as, as much as you close your grip, things will trickle through. Um, absolutely. And you know, as much as our son likes the older movies, he doesn't like the prequels. Um, he's only nine. He never, he right. can't even remember them. And we've watched them a couple times with him. We're going to do a full, full watch with them come this fall, but he likes the new stuff and he likes the rebels cartoon. And then he, he loves the new, uh, the new movies. And they speak to the him because they're a different style. And I think that goes with almost anything. People can easily get in that 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 area where they say, hey, you know what? I don't like this because it's not what I grew up with. And right. I think the acceptance that needs to be there in any fandom that things change and it never really technically ruins what you had. You can always go back right. and see it. Right. Absolutely. But they they got to have new new blood. New blood has to get into yeah, it and make to, that live. Yes, that's what a lot of people said about the last Jedi. So how come the you know how come Luke Skywalker they have this power? The Jedi didn't have that power. Well, we didn't know that. We didn't go through Jedi training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's the little things here and there. What's crazy is with with say the last Jedi, um, without us talking too much about it, our son thought it was super cool uh, that it was sad. But it was super cool that Luke had so much power that he was able to right. send himself over galaxies to be able to be where he needed to be to do what he does. And right. he was like, that's a lot of power. That showed at how badass he was, you know. Yes. And for a nine year old to understand that statement, I thought that was really cool. You know, Absolutely. yeah. And to me, it brought me back to I mean, my son. He's only three. And yes, he says, I want to watch the horsies, but. Yeah. When he's watching and giggling and laughing and cheering, I start to pay attention a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I and I see that. So, yeah. Wow. Luke was extremely powerful. Yeah. He could have done this and that. He chose not to. And everyone says, well, why did he choose not to if he was so good? I said, well, he had his reasons. Yeah. He <laughs> stayed. Same way Yoda was just as powerful and he did the same thing. Yeah. And even even when it came down to Kenobi, right? Like he chose yeah. a, a, that peaceful path because he could be more yes. powerful. And Absolutely. It, there's something to be learned from from that. 
you know, that there's that trend of it all, you know? So, yes. yeah. Well, even, even like rebels, you know, it, it makes me cry every oh, time, yeah. you know, when, when Kanan finally decides to, oh, yeah. to let it go. And we, we hit that moment where it shows up on XD. We turn, we always leave our, our box on XD in case kiddo turns on. And for the longest time, every time we turn TV off at night, XD plays and we had to watch Kanan die like every night every, for yes. a week. And it was just like, why, why are you tormenting me? <laughs> that is awesome. So that just that emotion that can come from it. So it, it yeah. And that's what this, this whole galaxy's edge. It, it, so that's what it did for me being a fan and just seeing every single little bit of every era of my ultimate fandom is there yeah. and amazing. Just it's, it's not the word to use, but it's the only one that I can describe <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, that's good though. That's, that's good to hear. Cause you know, I, I was skeptical at first with seeing, and I, I warmed up to it with seeing some photos and especially seeing some of your photos and things like that. And with watching some of the, the videos about some of the merch, I warmed up to it more because I was feeling a little like, well, what's going on here? Like, and not that I was wanting to be negative about it. From what I was seeing at first, I was feeling like there was something lacking. But hearing what you're saying and all that, it, it definitely it makes up for it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we went through the same thing. It's like, oh, they're going to do reservations. It's like, oh, okay, you know what? Let's just not go. Let's just wait. It's. It, I'm sure it'll be cool, but yeah, it's something we don't have to do. And then more pictures came out, and then more things came out. And I was like... What day do we do the reservations again? <laughs> How quick can we be there? <clears throat> You're right. And it's like, okay, let's do this, do this. And then it happened, like, come up on some overtime. It's like, oh, that pay for the hotel. Yeah. Sweet. Let's do this now. Now, it, now it's real. Yeah. And when we got when we got the reservation, it was, okay, now I'm getting really excited. Mm-hmm. And then more things came out. It's like, oh, I'm the excitement level just built and built and built. And expectations were met <laughs> yeah so do you have a, is there like one defining moment from your time there that you've had that would be like pieced out to be your favorite part oh wow nah. <laughs> yeah i went there i went there yeah oh, yeah <laughs> you're asking the in-depth questions um probably the whole millennium falcon experience even getting you know seeing the ship going in line and seeing it from every every aspect and all the little things you can do while you're waiting the things you see while you're waiting and then the whole animatronic condo made him look absolutely real yeah like a, a real person and then flying the ship and, and all the interaction with that was probably at least at the moment without thinking about it for two hours that was probably one of my favorite parts that's awesome. And that does say then that their their detail and all that was able to make that pinnacle, that crown jewel that they wanted it to be, to be a moment for a fan. Right. Yeah. And what what I'm glad I would have been glad either way, <laughs> but I'm glad they they did that attraction first. Yeah. Like you said, that's the crown jewel. That's the Millennium Falcon you were talking about. This is it's been in every aspect. It's it was where it all began it's where it's all going to end and it was there that's what people wanted to see and that's what they saw yeah how how long is the ride actually approximately uh, it's uh, around the same duration as probably a star tour it's a good okay like, four or five minutes okay cool yeah your, your mission is a good four or five minutes long and it almost seems longer because you're trying to do so much yeah <laughs> you know you don't get to aim the guns you just shoot them and that's fine by me yeah <laughs> being that your fiance was the the pilot would she pilot again she has a lot of uh motion sickness issues she's glad she did it she said maybe if she was the gunner or an engineer it might be different yeah she was there she had to pay attention to everything the screen (laughs) yeah i had heard from another friend on instagram that he was the pilot on his first run that he went through um and he would never pilot again only because of the motion sickness. Um, right. And he, he sat in the engineer seats when he did it again. And he said that would be, he would always trade someone for, to be an engineer, to be able to oh, ride nice. it. So, so that's what I was wondering is how, how that went for, for, for her. 
Yeah, she did love it. She got about three quarters of the way before it really kicked in. <laughs> she was really paying attention. She was really trying to go and, <laughs> and steer around these things and chase whatever it is we were chasing. It, it was it was wonderful. Nice. <laughs> It'd be exciting to see if, if it how it changes with different people and, and or if there's a different story on any of the other ones, because you said they were all color based, right? Yeah. So I'm wondering if you're chasing different cargo or stealing different cargo or delivering to a different place. Yeah. Which hopefully the next time we go, we'll find out. Yeah. Just be on that thing as much as you can. Once, once it opens yeah. up, it'll be interesting. I've heard that they're going to yes. be doing a virtual fast pass. Um, once it opens up, well, that'll be yeah. That'll so, be that'll probably be a good way to go. Yeah, they're trying to through go through the Max Pass through your phone or through what are the wristbands that they do in Florida. Yeah, they might do that. They haven't been able to figure out apparently the uh, the Wi Fi issue too much to be able to do the magic bands. I keep hearing that seems to be the problem. Yeah, it's, it's just because there's so much Wi Fi in and around where they are due to the hotels and of course everybody else's phone and yeah whatever else device they're trying to use. I'm sure there's some kind of issues yeah. they're going to keep running into. Well, hopefully they can, uh, you know, figure all those things out. Now they just announced that they're okay. going to start breaking ground on Marvel. So that'll be interesting. Yes. That's going to be another, okay, let's hopefully we can get in on an early so we can get, catch everything there. <laughs> yeah. That'll be interesting to see what they announce for that. Yeah. And of course they haven't announced anything in, in, Disney style. They're just going to make us wait and then be amazed. Right. I think it'll be pretty amazing for what they, what they got going I think on. So. They got so much, right. The, the park itself is expanding and changing so much. Um, and especially cause they had to do some changes because they weren't able to build that hotel. Right. Right. Yeah. So. It got blocked. So who knows? I mean, they got rid of a couple of restaurants, the movie theater and, you know, the ESPN zone, they're gone. So yeah. it's okay. What are they going to do now? Yeah. I'm curious because, cause they only have so many years left to be able to make that deal work, which was right. You know, or, or we got to start paying taxes on our tickets if they don't spend the $10 billion or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Something, yeah. Something like that. And I think that's where a lot of the money probably went to for Marvel. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm hearing uh-huh. that they're going to, once Marvel's finished, they're hoping to either do Fantasyland or tomor- redo Tomorrowland. Yeah, I, I heard the rumor about Tomorrowland as well and, and what they want to do, maybe a Tron coaster or I was talking with my brother-in-law and said, oh, maybe if they get a little deal with Tesla, have him redo the cars because cars really aren't of the yeah. future anymore. They're just cars. <laughs> yeah, they need to get rid of those uh, smokestacks on Autopia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can smell those things a mile away, right? <laughs> but on a, not on a veer back away from Disneyland. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about about Star Wars. All oh, right, just because you know we're keeping this Star Wars. We had a great time at Galaxy's Edge, and I thank you so much for sharing your experience because it's got me oh, more course. excited for it. So now I'm just going to be giving the big blues to Katie, and she's just going to, oh, seriously, yeah, why did oh, you do you this? <laughs> Exactly. So fully expect a, a shout out next episode with why, Justin, why? <laughs> It'll be out of nowhere. I just want to say one thing. Why? Yep. Um, out of Sorry, the uh, what, what is it? We were at eight movies. Well, I guess we're at not eight fully yet. But uh, what we're, is. We're, yeah, we're at eight when the saga plus the two standalone. Yeah. What has been. Number nine coming out. Yeah. What has been your favorite film so far? I have listed and relisted them <laughs> countless times. And if you ask 10 year old Justin, Return of the Jedi would have been number one. Okay. But now I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit older than 10 years now, <laughs> 42 years old. And Empire Strikes Back and Rogue One, to me, are the two top movies. Okay. I really enjoyed Empire Strikes Back, is just classic. It has. All the classic characters. It's got a mysterious Boba Fett, and it has the big lightsaber battle, and Luke loses his arm, and I am your father, and there it is. The Rogue One really brought the war into Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Without going full metal jacket war, but enough to where it's like, oh, the Rebels really struggled. Yeah. And you didn't really get that in the original trilogy, but you got that in Rogue One. Yeah, they did a great job of painting that gritty side of what wasn't the glamour of the Rebels, right? Right. 
and you see why they had to hide and you almost see them. Oh, Hey, we're not going to do this. We need to just give up. Yeah. And, and they didn't give up. And I thought I just, it was really, really cool the way they did that whole movie. Yes. I think, I think, well, for me, I, K2SO was my favorite part of that film. Oh uh, yeah. Oh. And of course, Alan Tudyk was, he's top three voice actor of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by, you know, of course, Paulson's number one. And then Cummings, and then and then him. <laughs> well, yeah, he's been in some pretty spectacular things, and he's lending his voice too as well. Not just acting, but but voice yeah. acting. He's been a pretty good golden horseshoe for uh, Disney there on their animation. Oh, yeah. Since he since he started doing his voice acting, definitely. Are you excited that they're going to be doing a K two S O and Cassian series for Disney Plus? I yeah, I think it's going to be real fun. I think that'll be another maybe kind of a more gritty. Almost like in the Mandalorian, looks like it'll be a little gritty. Yeah, you won't have the mystique and magic, I guess you want to call it, of a of a Jedi story. You'll just get this lone wolf, maybe kind of a kind of a story. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see, especially if he brings that same wit that he had in the film to his role as well. It plays off; it's like right. the, the straight man and the the comedian almost feel, um, but without being. Yeah too comedic do you have a favorite character in this in the the whole realm of star wars oh see that's the, that's you're really getting these hey, in-depth hey, art i i can here. toss on now i can toss on that this is inside justin on cup of red there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow um or how about how about three throw out three characters okay. that really stand oh, out okay. that that that, that help um yeah it, a little bit, <laughs> but come, come fall, come fall. You get to be ready. I'm really like, no, no, no. You got to pick one of those. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. It'll be uh, MFK. The biker, the biker Scouts from Return of the Jedi. Okay. I really like those and the way their armor is and the way they almost look like motocross. Yep. Uh, you know, bike riders. It's like, oh, okay, they ride bikes. They look like, oh, that makes sense. All right. But learning farther down the road, they're just you know, not just biker scouts; they're scout troopers. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, so they're they're literally everywhere. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of cool. Uh, and then as a kid, I was enamored by the snow trooper, the Imperial snow trooper. I just like the look of him and his his long white hood, and it's just they look they look like the Marines almost, the Galactic Marines, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course, uh, everybody's favorite Boba Fett is just. And his mystery and his mystique and his badassness, I guess. Nice. Well, that's awesome to know. It's awesome to know and learn that uh, uh, for you because I know you love your troopers. So it's it's oh, interesting. Yeah, the troopers interesting. is there. Ever since I read a novel about troopers, and it's like they really humanized them, and it's like I really like these guys, and that was that was the end of it. <laughs> nice. Have you ever dressed up as a trooper, or do you want to? I want to. Okay. Very much. If I win the lottery, I will buy multiple trooper <laughs> armor. <laughs> it'll just be the trooper closet. Yeah, I'll just you know it'll be like Dexter's lab, or he's a white coat, white coat. Mine will be like okay, stormtrooper, snow trooper, biker scout. Here we go. That is fantastic. I hope one day you'll be able to get to that goal of being able to rock one of those outfits. Oh, that would be amazing. Well, if you be in heaven, you need to be able to figure out how to do that and go to one of the Star Wars celebrations. Oh yeah, um, I know. There's there's a couple of different companies that that that'll that sell the armor, and it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I need to make a whole lot of money to justify <laughs> me buying it, buying a stormtrooper outfit. Yeah, it it's one of the things like for myself when the idea of like to cosplay and stuff like that, you, you want to do it, you want to do it right, and so that it's right. that, that feeling of like, hey, I'm gonna make this impressive. So I totally agree that. You know, you got to be able to put your time and money into it to be able to get what you want out of it. Because you don't want to just half-ass it and be like, well, I kind of got there, you know. Yeah. I think I'm out of questions at the moment. All right. I'll I'll come up with more. We'll we'll do this again. Uh, I kind of wanted to throw a couple hardballs at you there at the end just because I was curious and I was enjoying (laughs) talking to you. I was like, you know. Um, But I was more focused, of course, on Galaxy's Edge because that's what I wanted to hear about. And I wanted people that can't go 
or, you know, right. have the means to go to be able to get a, a experience of it. It's probably just going to have them salivate and be like, oh, I want to go more. Um, yeah. But oh, now we got to go. But maybe it'll help also some people know that someone that's huge into the, the fandom gives it their stamp of approval and maybe it'll help oh, yeah. that decision to to figure it out. Right. So. I do Definitely. really yes. appreciate you you coming on and out of your busy day to help talk to us about this. Oh, any anytime. I just appreciate talking to you. And we've been talking online for a couple of months now. It's just kind of like, all right, let's just geek out about Star Wars. And that's the best thing is finding people that you can have those moments with. So, oh yeah. You know, I, I really do appreciate that. And what I will do is I will make sure to, to draft up some questions. And when we go into the fall here, we'll have you on and we'll talk a bit more about Star Wars because we're going to do this fall. We're going to do a whole Star Wars series. We're going to do the prequels. We're going to do the cartoons. We're going to do the the awesome. original and then the new. So we'll definitely get you back on and oh, yeah. get some harder awesome. questions. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> I'll start making my lists now. There you my go. top of any whatever it is. The, the ranker. <laughs> I mean, that's what we need. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> well, thank you again, sir. I appreciate it. Hopefully you have a great Anytime. day. Thank you again to Justin for coming on to Cup of Red today. I appreciate it. Hopefully, kids, you enjoyed hearing all about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. I myself am really excited. I hopefully we can figure out a way to get down there to see it. If you've gone there and you've seen it and you've done different things, hit us up. Let us know because I love finding out more about it. Uh, And also, too, as I said, we're going to be doing a Star Wars episode uh, well, a bunch of them this fall. So hopefully you're all excited. I'm excited. Now I think I just want to go play with a lightsaber. Hopefully you all have a great day. Stay rad. Thank you for listening. Want more rad content? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. And remember, be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes!